and I am super excited to be here. So I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes and wanna invite some people um, and then we will go ahead and get started. Okay, so I think I'm done inviting people. So give me just one more second and let me share this and then we will get started. So hopefully everyone has had a great day. If you are on, please announce so I can give you a virtual hug and I can say hi to you. Um, but we are gonna be talking about stranger offers and why you, you need to be like Starbucks. So I've got some juicy stuff I wanna talk about relative to Starbucks. Okay, so there's gonna be a little bit of a lag between my um, ability to read your comments and me seeing myself. So I think we can, hey, Nest hi, Nestor, how are you? Nice to meet you, I'm glad that you could join. All right, so we are gonna get started and then just as people um, come on, I'll just say hi and, um, Feel free to make comments, share this out to any of your friends or other biz besties that you think would benefit from the information. All right, so we are gonna talk to, I was um, a member posted today in our Facebook ads at school group, how do I grow my mailing list? You know, what are some quick and easy ways to grow your mailing list? And so um, that was a bit of a surprise to me, but, it um, led me to the reason that I wanted to talk because I was thinking about this topic the other day about the whole concept of introductory offers. And although it's second nature to me because this is what I live and breathe every single day, it's not a second nature to you newbies who are new to marketing. And all you really know about is, is you've got this amazing product or service and you want people to buy it, right? That is what we are in business for is to people to buy our services. But I really want to break down the concept of stranger, um, to your business and what the appropriate way is to introduce your business to a stranger, particularly in the online space versus when you meet that person face to face, right? So um, if you are in a face to face business and you have a physical location and you're dealing with interact, you're used to dealing with people um, um, in person, that is a whole lot different than meeting somebody online and then, so you have to forgive me, my kids have just walked in from playing, so we have that, some dog activity. Um, so just give me a second. Where is your brother? Okay, I'm on the live. All right, so um, what we wanna do is, is we wanna, I wanna make sure that everybody really has a good understanding of how you properly introduce yourself to make that first interaction and exchange of, um, you know, giving to get something. And the first thing that you wanna get is that contact information. So what does that look like in practice? So we're gonna get started. All right, so last month, was a whirlwind of a month. I did a recap on Friday. So if you missed Friday's live, you should look at um, Friday uh, chapter nine recap. And we are now in chapter 10. Goodness, we're already in third day chapter 10. So sorry. I am cleaning my lens, doing everything all at the same time. So I'm sorry, things are a little bit jumpy. All right. So you know, I went probably about 20, 25 days every day in the group and talked about um, a different variety of marketing things. But the thing that I ended with at the end of September is the thing that I will begin with in the beginning of, of October is the concept of the customer stages and the relationship that you have to remember that you enter into with every customer that you have. So there are three stages that I equate to natural relationships that most people can, you know, they can understand, right? It's not, 
you know, it's not terminology that's foreign to you because most of you have been in some sort of relationship, either plutonic or romantic, so you understand this. The first stage of every customer relationship is the stranger stage. That in marketing terms is also referred to as your cold market. These are people who don't know you. They are not familiar with your business. They don't know your brand. They don't know anything about you, your solution, your amazing superpowers. They just met you either through an ad, through a recommendation, through something, but they don't know you. This is the hardest um, group of people to win over because they have nothing vested in you. They are not they're not aligned to you. They don't know you, they don't like you, they don't trust you. And it's not that they distrust you or they dislike you, they just don't know anything about you, right? So I always say in this stranger phase, this is equal to when you meet a girl or a guy and that first, and you're making the first move because you are the person who is making the first move by offering up something. So when you ask somebody out on a date, or if you've ever been asked out on a date, somebody has to approach you, right? They do not ask for you to get married. They don't ask for you to have their child. They don't ask for you to do any major commitments, no buying houses together, no moving in together, none of that, right? It is a casual, let's go have coffee, sometimes it's dinner, but I'm telling you as a business owner, your first interaction is a coffee date. You just want to have coffee with the person that you're meeting online or in some online capacity, right? And so what does coffee mean from a business perspective? It is a small, small item, right? Coffee takes 15 minutes to consume. You get to feel each other out. You get to ascertain if this is even someone that you want to pursue in a lengthy relationship or even dinner, right? So your coffee offer, stranger offer, needs to be something that follows these sort of eight principles. Now, I'm doing this by memory. I didn't get a chance to write them down so that I can remember them. But the real critical items that you want with your, um, I'm going to start with the most important in terms of that stranger offer, is that it needs to be an offer that is related to your core offer. So you all are in business for something. Nestor, if I remember your um, story, you sell, um, you fix computers or you fix networks. Um, I thought it was telephone connectivity and that kind of thing. So you offer technical IT services to small businesses. So write in the comments if that's true. If it is true, um, we'll use you as an example. I had a business consultant um, um, on as a member earlier today asking questions about how to find a mailing list. And we'll use that as an example, right? Your core service is business consulting. You probably do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Nestor, you probably do service appointments. You go out and people call you up and they say they have a problem and you go and fix it for a fee, right? That's probably your core service. If you have some other service, please write it in the comments. Yes, technology support, that's true. All right, so you do. So somebody has a problem, they call you up. You know, I'm, I've been in technology for years and so, you know, nobody ever calls you up, Nestor, when things are going well. It's always when something is broken and they can't fix it and they need it yesterday, right? I think it was Carol, um, Carla, I think Carla, who's got the consulting um, business. And again, if you do one-on-one -on -one coaching and you see this later, if you're joined later, you do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, you are interacting with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? So that's your core service. My core service, I'll use myself as an example, my core services is, is right now, it's training, Facebook ads training, and it's product launch training. Those are my core services. I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, no one calls support, right? To say great job. They never say, hey, Nestor, how you doing? How's your family? You know, what's going on? They're always like, shit, something is broken. I need you to fix it. And I've already rebooted, right? I mean, it's always that's the case, right? So, um, Christine, I think you do um, makeup, Rodin, Rodin Fields, right? So your core service, you have two actual core services. You sell... Um, you sell skincare products and you um, have an offer to people to join your team to grow and start their own business, right? So you have two separate audiences. I'm gonna stick, up, I'm gonna stick to the skincare audience for you as an example. 
those are your core services. You do not, under no circumstances, start selling your core services to strangers. Period. End of story. That is equivalent to marriage. That is equivalent in a beginning of a relationship talking about, I want to have children with you, right? You just don't do that. Um, <laughs> that's just not what you do um, to strangers. You don't, you do not diarrhea on them about all the things that you do and how you are the best thing since sliced bread. They don't know you. They just don't want to hear that yet, right? How you attract them is you you speak about one major issue that you know that you're going to be promoting in your core services, right? So I'm going to use Christine as an example. Let's say you have a, the product that you want to sell this month is a, um, it is a, give me an example of something. I don't know Roden, uh, Roden Fields products. I know my husband was approached and he's got a, uh, discoloration of his skin. So let's say you're going to sell one of those products that deal with uh, uh, pigmentation, skin acne or something like that, right? That's the core product. Say that that product is 50 bucks, right? I don't know what your price point is. Um, lash Boost, right? Tell me the price point on that. Um, but I know lashes, I can speak to lashes as an example. So uh, Nestor, let's say your core product is, is that you want to promote um, maybe PC health checks, right? And that costs $39.99, right? I, you know, again, I'm making this up. You want to do a promotion that's going to, your core promotion that you want to do is sell PC health checks so that people can get in front of their problems before their PC blows up in their face, right? So we got a lash boost and we've got a um, PC health check. So let's say that that's the core product, right? And you want to create an ad that's going to get you in front of thousands of people so that people can start to, that you can start to have coffee with them and nurture a relationship. Because um, 130 for six months supply, regrows with natural hair, longer short. Perfect. That's a great core offer. 130, I like core offers that are in the $200 mark, right? You don't start off with that. No, no, no sorry, Bob. Do you start Christine off with a stranger offer discussing a $130 commitment with people who know nothing about you? Don't even know if your lashes, no matter what they know about Road and Fields, it's not a common name, even though it's still number one premier skincare. It's still built on um, personal, um, individual, independent salespeople's you know, word of mouth, right? It's not in stores. It's not like something that it may resonate with every single body, right? So if you are a person who does not have a brand that is already established and you are having to create that establishment in someone's mind, you are having to, you're meeting strangers and you have to introduce your product and your service to those strangers. You have to ask for coffee, okay? So I've got two very powerful examples. We've got Christine's $130 six month supply, and we've got Nestor's $39.99 um, PC health check that he wants to sell as his core product, right? Yes, you must build uh, trust and rapport. All right, so tr the stranger offer, for example, for you, Christine, is maybe a, um, uh, it could be a guide on how to get fuller lashes naturally, right? Or the value of, you know, why having full lashes enhances your beauty. That could be a, a great, you know, either blog post or piece of information that girls who have wimpy eyelashes like me, it's, which is really amazing because all the men in my family have like these thick, beautiful lashes, but I don't have really thick, strong lashes. Older I get, my thinner my lashes are. So, you know, if you had a, a, a tip sheet or a article or a blog post or something that talked about fuller lashes, how it enhances, opens up your eyes, makes you look younger, that would be a great coffee stranger offer. That would be a great thing for you to be able to qualify people who actually needed their lashes to be thicker, right? Because they, they, people who click on that would want to, you know, there would be something wrong with their lashes to want to know why they would need fuller lashes to then want to enhance their beauty. So that type of, you know, tip sheet or guide would be a great coffee offer for your people because that would tell them you would know everyone who clicked on that would be somebody who is of interest in your market, right? <laughs> They're the bomb now. Love the tips. Thanks. That would be a great, a video would be also a great thing, right? So that would be a great stranger offer. 
Nestor for your stranger offer, right? You've got a PC health check, right? Yours could be a tip sheet or a video. Video is great, particularly if you're going to do Facebook ads. You could do a video on five ways to know when your PC is about to die, right? Five things to look out for if your PC is about to die. And then you could talk all about those five things that, you know, it's taking too long to load, you're having to reboot, whatever those five things are, right? I mean, I'm technical, but I'm not that technical. I know that I need probably a PC health check because my freaking computer, I have to do a hard shutdown like every other hour, it seems like. Memory is low, all that stuff. But anyway, you could do something. I'm so like easily, um, easily de de derailed this afternoon. So you could do a five tip sheet. Now, when I talk tips, you're always going to hear me do them in the powers of um, odd numbers. So it'll be three, five, seven, and 10. 10 is my magic number, but that is if I'm getting ready to do a live that I really know I'm going to spend some time talking about it. So you do three tips, five tips. And the reasons why is the second thing about your stranger offer, which is it needs to be quickly consumable. It needs to be consumed within five minutes or less, right? So a tip sheet that's five lets people know that it's quick, it's easy to read. You've done two things there. You've identified people who meet your ideal market because whatever it is that you're pointing them to, it's going to be related to your core offer. Your stranger offer needs to be related to your core offer, right? It can't be something like if, you're, if your core offer is the slash boost, I don't want you selling. I don't want you to talk about lips, right? I don't want you to talk about hand cream. I don't want you to talk about eyebrows. I want you to talk about lashes, right? I want you to talk about PC if that's your core thing. So whatever your core offer is, you have to start there to create your stranger offer. It needs to be related somehow, right? Because the third thing about your stranger offer that you need to do, so the first thing is, is that it needs to be um, related to your core offer. Um, and it needs to solve one problem that your ideal audience is facing. Two, it needs to be five, it consumed within five minutes or less. Three, it needs to um, it needs to solve. So it sort of relates to the number one, but it really needs to be not an end all solution, right? Your three, your six month supply, right, of lashes is a multi level solution right? Your PC fix is a multi-level solution, right? It fixes your entire PC and lets you know what is wrong with it, right? But that checklist specifically identifies what you need to do to let a person know when the PC is about to die. And everybody knows the problem is you don't want your PC to die in the middle of you working on an important project, right? You don't want your PC to die when you're about to go live and you're trying to host a training and it won't respond, which happened to me last week, right? You don't want your PC to die when you're about to do something really important, when you need to check email or it dies in the middle of you writing an email to a customer, right? That's what you're preventing. It's that one problem that your stranger offer needs to address, right? For Christina, your, you know, if you did that tip sheet on how that one problem is, you've got frail eyelashes and you're looking old and tired around the eyes, right? So you want them to have really a set of tips that are going to brighten their face up and make them look alive and look younger because every girl wants to look younger look younger, except for the young girls, right? But, you know, depending on what your market is, it'll depend on who you, um, you know, who you'd want to talk to. All right. Or what kind of offer you would want to have. So hopefully these stranger offers are making sense. So, you know, it needs to solve one problem. It needs to be consumable in five minutes or less. It needs to be ultra specific. It can't be a general solution. I want to solve, you know, I want to make you look beautiful all over. That is not a great stranger offer. That is not a great offer. You want to look some beauty, right? I want to beautify your face. I want, you know, I want your hair to be beautiful. I want your eyelashes to be beautiful. You want to narrow on a very specific beauty area, not general. Okay. So I'm going to breathe and take a little bit of a breather break. All right. So ultra specific, can't be general, can't be all over the place. Got to be very specific about what you're going to solve. Stranger offer. It's got to be coffee. 
You're not having dinner. You're not trying to have appetizers. You're not trying to have dessert. You're not trying to talk about the main course, coffee. That's it. Nothing else. Just one thing. One thing you need to solve in a very short period of time. It needs to be an exchange of information, right? So you need to say, I have this great thing. Here are the benefits. This is why you would want to opt into this and give me this. And I'm going to give you this information, right? This one thing, right? That is how you do a stranger offer. That is how you introduce yourself. That is how you get somebody engaged and ready to start a relationship with you, right? So um, there's some more tips. I can't remember them all off the top of my head. I'm trying to remember, um, but it's specific. It's the consumable in um, a certain amount of time. It's um, ensuring that you address one specific offer. It needs to be a break off of your core offer. Don't be random. Don't be, you know, talking about, you know, one other problem and it has nothing to do with your core offer. Everything needs to be connected because again, it's introducing that particular offer because you know ultimately you're going to be ascending them into your core offer at some time in the future. All right, remember, that this is an exchange, right? So this is not intended to be a money exchange. The exchange and the value that you're going to get is you're going to get that contact information, right? So you should not be asking for money in that first exchange. That first exchange is, I'm gonna give you this information, I'm gonna give you this piece of material to read, this material to consume, I'm gonna give you a video, I'm going to entertain you, I'm going to do fill in the blank, small type of thing in order for you to give me what I know is the most valuable piece of information I can have about my customer is their contact information. That is the value. So this is not about trying to make, you know, profit at this point. This is about trying to get the introduction. That introduction is the most valuable thing that you can have as a business owner is the ability to identify qualified people that meet your ideal client so that you can develop relationships. Okay, I'm going to pause. Hopefully this all makes sense. You guys are getting what I mean by stranger offer and that this is not the time to be hard selling. This is not the time to be really talking about all the wonderful things. This is about you introducing yourself, your business and your brand as a person that has solutions to their problems, right? Again, you're focusing on one problem, one solution through the, through the delivery of either a video, either a guide, a tip sheet. You can do a, um, there is, I have a whole list of um, ideas for stranger offers and I will include that in today's um, link as to what you can get that, the, the ideas. I don't, I, I didn't uh, include it when I uh, posted, but, Guides are great stranger offers. Tip sheets are great stranger offers. Um, uh, blog posts, so information articles, um, case studies that are small case studies, um, that kind of stuff are great testimonial, um, are great stranger offers to just introduce people to what, um, Good, good. I'm so glad, Nestor, that you have some ideas because that's what this is really about, is really trying to figure out what what it is that you want to introduce your product to, right? So how does that translate from, you know, I've given them this information to an introduction, right? How is it that I'm now, you know, building a relationship? Because just when you get those digits, right? Like when you get that digits of that girl or that guy, right? You got to pick up the phone, you got to call them and you got to keep in contact with them, right? You don't meet somebody and think that they're hot and cute and don't ever call them again or don't ever talk to them again, right? You continue the relationship. You keep, you call them, you pick them up, you pick, pick them up, you know, based on how well the conversation and the coffee date went, you decide to ask them out on another date, right? You got to start the conversation. You got to you got to start the relationship. And so that relationship starts with that first exchange. And the reason why you want that exchange is so that you can communicate and start talking to them and start introducing them not only to your business, but to you as an individual, because at the end of the day, your biggest asset is the number of people that know, like, and trust you. And in the online space, when you are advertising in the online space, it is all about people's knowing you that counts, right? 
This is a very personal space that we are in. So social media marketing is very personal. It is, again, they don't have to be in your personal business, but it is about relationships. People want to see, they want to touch, and they want to feel your presence and your energy, and they can only do that by that type of interaction. That's why lives and video is so powerful online compared to just the written word. Video is just an amazing way to get that connection and build that connection quicker. <laughs> Good. I'm so glad. Um, so that is what is really important. So it's it's you get that exchange of information, and then you have to you have to start to build that that relationship. So what are some ways that you build that relationship? And so this is where the Starbucks analogy comes in, dude. I bought now. I have exchanged quite a bit of money between me and Starbucks to the point that they have they have ingrained in me a relationship. So the next stage is after stranger is acquaintance, right? That's somebody who knows you. They're familiar with your brand. They, you know, they, they're getting to know and like you. They're ready to maybe open up their wallet and spend some money with you to test out the waters, right? They may be ready to not necessarily buy the six month supply of your eyelash booster, but maybe be ready to buy the one month trial to make sure. And then you're going to get them hooked so much, you know, maybe that's like $17. They buy the lash boost and they're ready, right? Maybe Nestor, they come out and they get your $39.99, right? Because that next acquaintance phase is a low offer that you want to extend, right? So something that's going to be um, the best lowest offers or anything that are under $20, that's your next introductory paid offer where you're converting them to an actual paying client, right? And that's because you've given them some value that they're ready to test the waters with you. If you've got a $20 kind of ex acquaintance, those are perfect offers. You can go as high as $100, right? Acquaintance offers that go as high as $100, you can do that, right? But if you start hitting over $100, people are not really willing to spend, drop a hundred, you know, a stack on you, and they don't know you, like you, or trust you, right? They want to know a little bit more about you before they start doing double digits with you in terms of their money, right? So that stranger offer is free normally, right? It is free. Doesn't, it doesn't request a lot of their time because again, I'm not giving up, I'm not giving you two hours of my time. I don't know you, right? Even if it is that you say you can fix my world, I still don't know you. Two hours is a huge amount of time for me, right? Um, because time is just as valuable as money for people. So acquaintance is the next stage, right? So now they're getting to know you, right? You're, you're in their inbox, you're, you know, you're on lives with them every day. They're getting to know the fact that, you know, you like you guys are knowing that I wear sweaters and my sweater is not on, but I'm getting cold. So I'm going to put it on. But like I wear Mr. Rogers sweater every time I come online because my husband keeps the house at like 62 and I'm always cold. Um, but like, they're getting to know you, right? They're getting to know who you are. They are seeing you as an expert in your in in your field. They um, that trust is becoming stronger, right? Because you're able to deliver solutions. You're demonstrating your expertise in your specific space, right? What I want to tell you though is is that relationship stage doesn't have to take months, doesn't have to take years. It can happen very quickly. It can happen in a sales funnel. It can be boom, 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 and they go from you know downloading your your freebie to buying your your introductory offer to going straight to your core offer. That can happen in the matter of minutes, right? It really is dependent on how well you are speaking to their need, where they are in the buying process, and if they're really ready to pull the trigger. Okay. Yeah, no, your tribe doesn't work that way, Christina, because you're in a you're in an organization that's all about network marketing, right? So what I'm telling you is is that you're going to want to operate like a small business and just not operate the way a network marketer operates. You want to operate like a small business would in terms of the way you market your services. What you do in the back office with Roden Fields, that's your business, right? Don't that's not any customer's business. You need to focus on your business as you would as any other small business person that I would talk to, right? So again, that's why I want you to treat these people as separate beauty beauty buyers. Um, um, <laughs> 
Okay, hopefully you're nodding your head in positivity, right? Um, you know, your ideal market is beauty buyers, people who want beauty products, and people who want to start their own business, right? So you got to divide them and think of them that way. Nestor, your ideal market is everybody in the world, right? So you've got to be very, you know, anybody who's got an electronic device and needs to have it available. So you have a very broad market. So you really have to narrow down how you want to attack going after particular markets when you advertise um, and speak to them. So, okay, so acquaintance is the second. You're going to do offers. You're going to do, you know, your introductory offer and then BFF, right? Everybody knows BFF, right? BFF are mates, right? These are people who will die for you, who will buy your shit. They will be like, boom, whatever you got, I'm buying it, right? You, you got a 12-month supply of Lash Boost. I'm in there like swimwear, right? I am ready to get whatever you have to order. And that's true. You have fixed my computer before not only did you fix it you did it quickly you were nice and you didn't talk that technical support crap that people do and talk to me like I was an idiot right Nestor I love you right that's the BFF stage those are the people that when you send stuff to dude they're ready to buy right they're always ready to buy your stuff because they love everything about you they are your cheerleaders they are screaming at the top of their lungs that is the easiest market to sell to, right? That's the easiest market. You don't have to, you have to jump through hoops. You, I mean, I'm not saying that you gotta be lazy and you don't do your job and you don't be a super person, right? So you gotta save the day, you still gotta provide solutions. But my point is, is that when you are hard selling and you've got two hour appointments, you've got you know six month supplies that you're selling, you sell it to your BFF market. You don't sell it to strangers. That's my whole point is, is there is relationships and there's levels to this shit, right? You sell according to the level that you are in the relationship stage that you are from a business perspective. So wherever you are in that relationship with that customer is how you sell to them, right? You're going to sell to your BFF. You're going to come out with hard offers. You're going to run ads that are going to say, I've got a limited supply of six month you know, Lash Boost, right? You're gonna run that to all your people who are on your existing list that have bought Lash Boost from you before, right? Nestor, you're gonna offer two hour appointments to everybody who's already got a PC checkup, right? Those are people that you run these kind of offers to. Stranger offers, you run stranger free, get to know you coffee offers to them. So let's talk about Starbucks. Why does Starbucks continue to get my money? The And why am I their BFF? It's not like they got the best coffee. The thing messes with my stomach. It keeps me up all night long. And it doesn't even really taste that good, right? But do you know what it does do? Do you know what it does do? They get this cool ass app that I can put my money on. I don't ever remember have to, to remember to have my fish in my phone, fish, fish in my purse for my wallet. I just flip out my phone and boom, it's there. I can connect my payments to it and I just give them my phone. My phone is always in my hand. My purse and my wallet are never in my hand. That is one reason why I buy them. The number two reason why I buy them is because they've got this stupid point system that is freaking amazing, right? So every time I buy coffee, I'm adding points. Now, it's not even like the standard point system like most people have, right? I shop at Kroger's, which is my local grocery because of their point system towards my gas. Starbucks because of their point system towards free coffee, right? Right. I tried all their coffee. Every Pretty much every flavor doesn't sit well with my stomach except for the vanilla, vanilla skinny, right? But I keep going there because they've got amazing service. They are quick with their line. Even when they're wrapped around, it still only takes me less than five minutes to get through. There's a Starbucks on every corner and they keep me engaged through this app that makes it easy for me to, 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 to pay them. It makes it easy for me to want to get more stuff with them, right? They send me email. They send me notifications in my app. They don't ever let me forget that we're BFFs. They, like they, when I even want like, I bought a Keurig, right? Because I was like, I'm bonk Starbucks. I'm not going to be a Starbucks Starbucker anymore, right? I'm not going to do it anymore. So I got this Keurig. And I was working from home. And so I was not like working. I wasn't leaving my house. I was in the house. I was like, I'm not doing Starbucks anymore. I'm spending way too much money. And, you know, one day I was like, back to back. I was in meetings and then I was, I had football practice and then I, I was out of my house all day and I didn't make coffee. And then there I am back to the freaking liquid crack that Starbucks says they get me hooked on their app. They, you know, I remember the taste and I'm jolted out of my thing because it's better than t drinking a Red Bull. My whole point to the story is Starbucks has, I have tried to move back to acquaintance and back to being a stranger to Starbucks, but they keep 
bringing me back in, right? Because they keep giving me features that speak to me as a consumer. They keep um, coming up with new products that for me to taste that are gonna make me fall in love with them all over again. I mean, last year I was in love with pumpkin spice. I tried to drink it this year and I almost threw up, right? But the point is, is they keep, they keep bringing me back. So every time I try to get out, they keep bringing me back, right? That's what you need to be. You need to be the Starbucks of your particular industry. You need to be in front of your customer. Once they're your customer, you need to be reminding them if they're not moved from acquaintance to BFF or they're still at that stranger phase and they haven't purchased from you, you need to be keeping to giving them compelling reasons why. So this is where I bring up why you need to have a mailing list. Most of us small businesses, you know, before I was um, the marketing boss pro, right? I was just a regular small business owner. I had a brick and mortar barbershop and a salon. Marketing was my thing. I just did it for myself. I didn't do it for others. And I did it rather well for myself. But you know what? I didn't really, when we first opened, you know, 12 years ago, 11 years ago, however long it's been, we didn't have, I didn't keep an email list. I never emailed the people like, cause I was like, I don't know what to say to them. You know, we're handing out, we're doing guerrilla marketing back 12 years ago. We're handing out flyers. We're handing out business cards. We're leaving them all over the city. We're hiring people to leave stuff all over the city, right? I wasn't using online marketing, right? Most business uh, business owners still in 2017 are operating in that mode, right? They're handing out their physical business cards. They're trying to meet as many, very many people as they can. And they're not leveraging the power of social media. Even these giants who have well-known name recognition, Starbucks, Walmart, um, you know, Target. These people are using online um, marketing, right? So why aren't you? And that means if you wanna use online marketing, your first thing is, is you need to ensure that you're capturing assets, right? You're capturing assets that are important to your business and that contact information is the number one asset you need to make sure that you capture. Um, even though I have all of their email addresses, right? That's, you don't, right? And so you're not, you're not keeping them engaged, right? How do you, you know, they buy from you and you probably occasionally, you know, if they remember and they run out, right? But you need to be, I mean, the holiday season is coming up. You need to be all in their inbox talking about all these great specials and promotions that you're running. Even, you know, I mean, and there is a science to the way that you run promotions, but that, that email address is how you keep Starbucks they have their app, they they send me notifications in my app. Not only that, they send me emails with the same notification just in case I miss it, right? But do I not, do I miss it? No, because my email is on my phone. So I get the email, I get the pop-up notification every time I spend, lets me know how much points I have. And then it, every every week they have a new bonus promotion which is geared to get me to come in the store more. If you go five people, you know, if you come five times in a row and you buy this particular product, we'll give you 75 points, right? And if you get 125 points, you get a free coffee, right? Everybody's trying to buy for the $4 free coffee. And I think it's any size, the grand, medium or small. My point is, is Starbucks has got their game on point. You need to be like Starbucks. I'm talking, you need to be emailing. You need to, if you are a business that can develop an app, you should develop an app. If you can't develop an app, you definitely need to be an email. If you are in a business that people desperately can relate and connect to, like beauty business, you should have some sort of group, right? That you can continually keep your people engaged. You can do product reveal, reveal reveals, reveals. You can do product reveals when new products come out. You can talk about how to put on said makeup, how to put on said whatever, show them before and afters, get demo models and do all that kind of stuff. You can run specials just to your group members. Nestor, for you, same thing. You've got a um, tech, you do technical support. You could have a tech support group and you can invite maybe your highest paying customers to this group or your, your, you know, people maybe who have a monthly subscription service maintenance agreement with you, they can be invited to this group and get specialized support. There is all sorts of ways that you can use groups, Facebook groups primarily, to nurture 
your existing market, right? And so that's what you should be doing, right? So you got your customers. Groups are great for strangers and customers in so much that you can create exclusive groups for strangers and private, even more exclusive groups for people that meet special criteria for you to nurture them even more and give them sort of some sort of exclusivity, right? I, I recommend both. I recommend a VIP type group page and a business page. You need the business page to advertise. I recommend both. Um, your business page is your public profile that speaks specifically to who your business is, whereas your group is going to be for people that you select to be on there based on some criteria, and it could be based on some exclusive, exclusivity on you know, maybe the price point, whatever that criteria is for you. But um, my peers typically have a VIP customer page, but it meant they don't maintain them properly. It's a large opportunity lost if you don't maintain it, right? Because you can be running specials just for this VIP group and people who hit a certain mark, you give them white glove service in this VIP group. You do reveals to them, product reveals. You do all sorts of amazing shit in a VIP group um, for people who pay to be in that group. Um, so absolutely, it's a missed opportunity for you. Again, your role, so again, I see your number one job is to market. Your number two job is to build and nurture and um, create long lasting relationships. And your number three job is to do your superpower, whatever that may be, right? So number one, market. Number two, build relationships and nurture. Groups are great ways to do that. So it's not just your strangers you have to nurture. You gotta, you gotta nurture your existing customers. You missed a lot. You're going to have to watch the replay, Rhonda. Um, so we are talking about stranger offers and why your business needs to be like Starbucks. And so, and welcome. I'm glad that you're able to join. Um, so what you've got to do, Christine, is you've got to, you've got to figure out how you're going to keep people as BFFs, right? How do you keep business owners as BFFs to you and aligned to you, not going to any other rodent and fields um, person that they meet off the street who's trying to sell them the same stuff that you're selling them, right? And how do you become their preferred person that's they're always going to be like, I'm not, I'm not going to you. Christine's my gal. What is wrong with you? Get out of my face, you woman. I'm not trading off of you, right? That's the kind of relationship you want to, you want to build with your customers is that they don't want to go anywhere else. Nestor, they don't want to go to any other guy. They don't want to go to, you know, 1-800-Computer-Geeks. They don't want to go to staples up the street they don't even want to go to the apple dealer they want to come to you to fix their problems because when they come to you they know that you're going to solve their problem right that's the number three is a superpower is that you got the superpower and they got the problem and they only want you to be their superman yes absolutely a vip page is absolutely where you should get started right so Starbucks is it, right? I want you to go to your inbox right now, each of you who are watching this, and I want you to go to your email, and I want you to see how many emails you receive from brands, well-known brands or unknown well brands that are in your inbox today. Now, you may argue with me that email doesn't work, and I'm going to say bullshit because it does work, because there, there's too much studies that say that it does work. I personally have had amazing success, as are most of the customers that I work with who actually follow through and create email series in terms of building a relationship and nurturing. Once you get in and you get to that acquaintance stage and you're delivering value to your customers, people will open your email because they want to know what you have to say. They don't want to miss an email from you. They don't want to miss what you have to say because they know that you know what you're doing. You're not spam to them. You're not somebody who is just in their inbox, flooding their inbox with information that is meaningless to them, right? So I want you to look in your inbox and I want you to see every single person, um, every single person that you do business with, particularly if their name brand sends you some sort of regular email communication. Email is free. doesn't cost you a thing to send an email, right? I do recommend that you do have an email 
um, solution provider like MailChimp, Active Campaign, Constant Contact. Um, and when we do the training um, on the 19th, I will talk to you about my recommended solution providers. And one of them is an email handling system because it just makes your life easier in terms of how you send email. Um, you, nobody should be sending massive amount of emails one by one. But um, at the end of the day, Look in your inbox, and I want you to see how many of the brands that you associate with send email. And if you're not doing it, you're missing a free opportunity to market to your customers, a free way to get your new products and services in front of your existing customer base, a new, a free way to nurture your customers if you're not emailing. So email, even though I know it is painful, it's personally my kryptonite, um, it is still a valuable way to stay connected. Your existing customers expect. I read a study from Constant Contact this year that says that 58, it was like 58.6% of people polled expected the businesses that they do business to send them email, right? And if you are not doing that, you're missing an opportunity to communicate with it, right? So that's a powerful nurturing tool that you should be using in your business to stay engaged with your existing customer base, right? Facebook groups, yet another powerful tool, free tool to stay connected to your existing base and to develop relationships with strangers so that they can see you and they can hear you. So it's not just about, you know, posting, because I will tell you, case study on my own business, I have been free years like extremely video shy like i just doing videos is like the the has been the worst kryptonite of my entire business career like i would prefer not never to have to show my face on video if i if i could get away with it right but comparatively when i show up on video and people can hear my voice they can see my face they can see me and that you know either they like the way that my body language is or they don't really i don't give a shit that's really not it's not about them liking those that won't like you don't worry about it because for everyone that does like you there'll be someone that doesn't like you right so I am less concerned about my own personal issues about being on video and I show up. I come up and I express my superpower and I let you all see and I give you information that hopefully is valuable to you and valuable to you to your marketing efforts. Me showing up on video and showing up in my group in a visual uh, respect is much more powerful than me just posting in my groups um, and not showing up visually, right? So from a social media perspective, from personal experience, showing up in those groups is the most important thing, right? Letting people actually connect to who you are as a person, let them see and understand who, what your story is so that they can start to know and like and trust you. Now, if you are in a different forum, a different marketing channel, I would say video was not as important, but if you're on Facebook, Instagram, any of the social media platforms, you need to be having some sort of video presence in there to be powerful. Um, okay, so Starbucks, Target, you can fill in the blank. I don't care whatever name brand it is, but you need to be like them. And the thing is, is like there is no time like the present to be exactly like them. You have the power and you have the tools to be just like the big dogs. You have the power and the tools. It's cost. It is no longer cost prohibitive to be in front of your ideal customer like it was 10 years ago, right? The only really powerful way you could be in front of your customers in or attract strangers in mass was through video and um, I'm sorry, television and radio, right? Newspaper, direct mail, those were all very, very, very expensive, right? Thousands upon thousands of dollars it took for you to get in to get in front of ideal customers, right? And still the targeting wasn't on point. Like you couldn't, you couldn't laser focus like you can using Facebook. And I did that in my training last week. You can't laser focus and identify women between the ages of 25 and 34 who love lashes and love beauty, who are about to get married, who have two children, you know, who live in a 10 mile radius. You couldn't do that through the type of advertising mechanisms and the targeting mechanisms that you could, you could do, do it through basic demographic information. That's the kind of laser focus ability that you have with utilizing Facebook ads. Powerful tool. You have that power at your disposal, right? You have the ability to get in front of 
thousands of people through the use of a Facebook group or you know if you were using another social media through Instagram whatever your platform of choice is get in front of thousands of people and speak your message and interact with them there's no time like right now that you've been able to do that interact with them on a personal level you were typing with me right now and we are talking I don't know you all right we just met right the ability to do that is like no other, right? And it's free. Most of the stuff is free, right? Attracting the customers may cost you some investment, but nurturing that relationship, if you do it right, should be all done through free mechanism. Retargeting and you know doing special promotions and special campaigns, maybe some additional investment, but what I'm saying is you attract, you develop, and you convert, right? That process, is like no other time in the entire history of marketing your ability to do it and do it like the big brands right coca-cola um target starbucks walmart to be able to advertise and get in front of your customers you don't need to get in front of millions of people you know granted if you wanted to be a billion dollar customer client I'm not suggesting that you can't be a billion dollar business, right? You just gotta be willing to spend more in advertising, right? You gotta be willing to do more in terms of your ad spend in order to be like them. But you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. Your reach doesn't have to be billions of people in order for you to make an incredible amount of money and to be to have a lucrative business, six figure, seven figure business, it doesn't even have to be as big as Target for you to be able to see those numbers if you're marketing your business correctly. All right, you need to be like Starbucks. You need to keep pulling your customers back in just like Starbucks keeps pulling me in. Dude, I can't quit Starbucks if I tried, right? They're in my veins, they're in my phone, they're in, they, they've got an app. And even if I wanted to quit, they've got money, I, they got my money hemmed up now, right? Like their app has got, like always has got at least 25 to $35 of my money ready to spend at any time. I need a burst of disgusting coffee. I don't even really like them, right? I'm gonna tell you not only have they hooked me on their less than par coffee, right? I am now buying a protein box. So I am upwards spending $10 a day at Starbucks in my attempt to eat healthy. So some ridiculous protein box, two eggs, some apples, some skimpy little thing of grapes and cheese and a little piece of bread. I spend $10.72 every time I go to Starbucks in the morning and I'm saying, I vowed at the beginning of the year to, to, to drop them like a hot potato and they have pulled me back in. You need to be doing the same thing with your customers. You need to be pulling them back in, giving them exactly what they need and speaking their language. But you don't do that from the beginning. You do not ask for marriage at the beginning. You ask for coffee. Create your stranger offer. Make sure that you are creating offers that are compelling them enough to want to learn more about you and your business, all right? That's your stranger offer. Be like Starbucks. All right, so let me make sure I get uh, to your comments and your notes. And um, with that, I'm going to let you go back to the rest of your evening. All right, so Rhonda, you said, I, I need to learn how to create a Facebook business page. So I, I don't think I've done a, um, a training on a Facebook business page. I did do a training on a Facebook group. Um, how to create a Facebook group and ways to do that. But a business page, I have not done that. So you know what, maybe we can do a quick demo, a demo training, because it's something that if you guys are serious about Facebook advertising, having a business page is as critical as having your pixel installed, right? So if you don't know what your Facebook pixel is, um, search in the group and search for pixel. I think I just reposted last week the fact that you need to have your Facebook pixel installed on your website. Um, if you cannot do that, um, there are some ads that you can run um, and get around that, but they're not going to be the most effective ads that you run. So Rhonda, I will do a Facebook business page um, quick demo. Um, I don't, tomorrow is Wednesday. Um, I, I may be able to do it tomorrow. Um, I'll do a live on just how to create a Facebook business page and some tidbits of information that you wanna know in terms of making sure that page is set up for uh, Facebook advertising um, and making sure that's set up right. So hopefully that will help you out. All right, do you, does anyone else have any questions or comments that they wanna make before I let you go for um, chapter 10, day three? See if there's any more comments and then I'll go. Oh, absolutely, no problem, Rhonda. 
<laughs> Thank you. You are so welcome, Nestor. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, I'm super glad to hear that. So um, we've got some. We've got two trainings um, this month, um, in the month of October, and then we are launching. So if you guys didn't hear the announcement, we are launching Facebook Ad School, which launches at the end of October. And um, I will take a couple of minutes and talk to you a little bit about that, just um, because Nestor, you said that you've been, you know, trying to find this information for the last couple of months and you haven't been. And I'll tell you kind of who, who Facebook Ad School is for. So the name of the program is Facebook Ad School: No Newbie Left Behind. And this school is going to be a four-week program, and it is designed for small business owners who are interested in building, is um, having that coffee drink, right? Is creating their stranger offer, um, making sure that that stranger offer relates to their core offer, making sure that we have all of the components, your landing page, your email sequence that you're going to run once once you have that, that stranger exchange of information, and then the types of ads that you will run. So the objective of the class is to get you um, get a funnel created that is going to generate you leads for using a stranger offer. So that class starts on October 22nd. It's four weeks long. At the conclusion of the class, you will have your ad up and running. We're getting some results and leads, um, consistent steady flow of leads, and you'll be able to scale that up depending on how much money you want to spend to scale it up based on its performance. So that class, like I said, starts October 22nd. Um, who is it for? It's for business owners just like you. If you've got a core offer, you don't have a mailing list, um, and you want to get your offers, your stranger offers, in front of strangers. <laughs> That's funny. You want to get stranger offers in front of strangers. You want to meet as many strangers as you possibly can. So I'll use my numbers. I think in my um, training that I hosted at the beginning of the month, I uh, did... I ran an ad because um, I always like to run ads for whatever it is that I am promoting to use that as demonstration for success so you can see something that's really relevant. So I ran an ad. I spent, um, I want to say I spent $230 and got 196 registrations. Um, which built my email list up by 100 and, um, and I think I ran the ad for a week. I think I ran it for seven days. Um, and so I was really happy with the results of that um, ad, and that's kind of where I'm talking about. So I think it was like 15,000 people that the ad reached to couldn't in a million years in seven days reached 15,000 people, right? Got 196 new emails and, and beginning to develop relationships with 196 new people that I didn't know before. Um, and so that's what this program is going to be all about. It's about how to create a way for you to consistently add new leads of people who are in your ideal market, right? And ensure that we lay the framework for that, right? Because it takes more than just creating the ad to make all of this work. And so we put all those pieces together so that you can start to have coffee with as many people as you freaking can, right? I want you as a business owner starting to develop those relationships with as many any possible people as you can. And so the most powerful way to do that is through Facebook advertising. So if you're new to Facebook ads and you're ready to get started, you have a core offer. Um, and even if you don't have, um, let's say Nestor, I'm going to use you as an example. You have multiple core offers. You have multiple services. We will narrow down one particular, particular product or service that you would offer. And in this class, that is what we will build this funnel. We will build a stranger offer for you an introductory offer ultimately to your core offer and this program is focused on getting leads into your business so you can start to develop that um, relationship Christina same thing for you you've got you know I know you sell beauty products Rodan and uh, field sells skincare products so you've got a myriad of different products again you would be focused on one core product offering whatever that may be the six month lash whatever package of products whatever but it would be one core product we'd break it off into a stranger offer and then we would build everything out to support that 
For you, Christina, since you have a third party company that you work with, we would be interested in building out your funnel outside of your Road in the Fields website and connecting the two of them together. So just wanted to give you that little bit of tidbit. So I'll be talking about that over the next several weeks. Um, if that is something that you're interested in, I'm going to leave the link. You can also ping me, ask me any questions once you visit the page. Um, but we kick off on October 22nd. Again, perfect for people who want to have five to 10 new leads coming into their business every single week. Um, if that's you, then this is something certainly you would be interested in taking. All right, if there's not any more comments, I'm gonna let you go. So I owe you two links. I owe you tomorrow, we will try and do a demo for Facebook business page. I'm gonna do a poll in the group and see if there's anybody else. I think everybody probably could utilize this um, demo. Some of, even if you have a business page, we'll go over some tips that you need to make sure that your business page is um, advertising ready because there's some things that you need to have on your business page to make it ready for ads. Yes, absolutely, Christina. You you have got to divorce yourself, and I don't mean that in a negative way. You need to start thinking of Rodin and Fields website as your back office website, just an ordering site for you. You need to be driving people to your own asset, your own branded asset. That is the Christina. I'm not even going to try and butcher your last name, um, but the Christina G site. You know, whatever your name of your company is going to be, and you think of Rodin and Fields as your um, vendor, your supplier. Okay. All right. It was great talking with you guys today. Hopefully um, you guys learned some stuff and you guys are revved up and you've got those brain juices flowing. Um, I am looking forward to seeing you in Facebook ad school at the end of the month. We've got two more free trainings that are happening this month that are going to really just talk more about some more strategy that you need to know really put together what that whole sales funnel is. Um, and then the last training of the month is really gonna be talking about tools and the types of tools that are gonna really, you need to have all the pieces put together. All right, I am super excited to have you guys here and I'm super excited to be working with you all. So um, we will talk tomorrow, so talk to you soon.